Well, hi there. This is a black African house snake. In fact, this is my black African house snake. And she needs a name, so I'd appreciate suggestions in the comments because this is one amazing snake. I've seen African house snakes around at expos and pet stores from time to time for literally decades. But it wasn't until Garrett Hartle from Reach Out Reptiles started talking to me about them that I really took notice. You see, Garrett doesn't work with too many species. In fact, until recently, he mostly just worked with dwarf and super dwarf retics, which are snakes that basically everyone else overlooked. I mean, if someone wants a retic, it's because they want a giant snake, right? But when he saw them, he said, these are amazing. And after I got my two from Reach Out Reptiles, I have concluded that they are the best pet snakes I have ever had. So when Garrett told me that he was going into African house snakes in a big way, I listened. He said these were like super dwarf, super dwarf retics that happen to not be pythons at all. And again, super dwarfs are the best pet snakes, of which I am aware. So in my friends, Jacob and Jamie Huser, who've also jumped into African house snakes with a vengeance, offered this girl to me, I jumped at the opportunity. And after having her for several months now, I finally feel like I'm ready to weigh in on the black African house snake. To help you determine if the black African house snake is a good pet, or if Garrett is just hurtalizing. And to decide if the black African house snake is the best pet snake for you. So to figure this out, we'll have to examine the black African house snake based upon our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. But first I want to talk just a little bit about what these snakes are. Like I said before, despite their apparent similarity to super dwarf retics, these aren't pythons. They also aren't colubrids, boas, elapids, or vipers. They belong to the family Lamprophiidae, which interestingly may also contain the elapid snakes like cobras and coral snakes, but it certainly is the same family that includes the stiletto snakes. This is a hardcore group of venomous snakes that can maneuver their fangs in such a way that they can envenomate you even while their mouth is closed. Even if you've secured them behind the head in a way that would prevent other snakes from being able to bite, they can still get you. Oh, and when you are bitten, which is almost unavoidable when handling them, your flesh begins to die and you often lose digits and it may be fatal at times. But this snake, the black African house snake, which is actually just a locality of the brown house snake, Boeodon fuliginosus, is a non-venomous member of the family. And you may notice that my black house snake often looks, well, not black. And that is because these guys fire up and fire down like crested geckos. Sometimes they're jet black, and sometimes they're nearly white. And most of the time, they're 50 shades of gray, except without all the toxic relationships. And they come from the same parts of Africa as the ball python, which is pretty rad. These guys kill using constriction like super dwarfs, but they're more similar in size to a corn snake, which is also a constrictor. And that's a really good size for most keepers. They get bigger than my girl is now, but they stay in that two to four foot range with females being considerably larger than males. If even a super dwarf retic is too large, these guys may still be a good fit for you, especially a male. But are they? Let's find out. When it comes to handleability, we give the black African house snake a score of four out of five. I was tempted to go five out of five. Handleability was the only reason that corn snakes didn't get a perfect score. And these guys are very much like corn snakes to handle. They're about the same size and they have a similar temperament. But I would argue that they're actually a bit better. They're probably a bit less darty and a bit less defensive as babies, but they're still a size that can be a bit too fragile to hand to a small child. You just need to be careful with them uh, so that they don't get hurt while you're handling them. And that's really their only flaw. They don't have any flesh melting venom like some of their cousins. They're too small to do much damage if they bite and they're uninclined to bite anyway. Plus really personable. They are a bit more wiggly than some of the other more heavily bodied house snakes. And they could poop on you, but I haven't noticed that to be a problem with these guys. It is with super dwarfs though. Always watch for that bulge. 
it cost me a computer. Anyway, this is a great snake to handle for anyone with a bit of experience handling snakes and that can be careful not to harm a skinny little guy or girl. When it comes to care, we give the black African house snake a score of four out of five. There can be an issue with the black African house snakes. It can be difficult to get babies feeding, especially on frozen thawed feeders. This is actually a big part of the reason that the Husers decided to rehome this pretty girl. She's captive bred, but they couldn't get her feeding on frozen thawed feeders. And given that they were having this issue with her and that it is somewhat common with these guys, they decided to focus on the other African house snake species instead. Now I'm happy to announce that we did recently get her to switch over to frozen thawed but this is an issue. A few years back, we made a whole video on the benefits of frozen thawed rodents over live feeders. Because if you can't get a snake to eat frozen thawed, then care becomes much more burdensome, dangerous, and unpleasant than it is feeding on frozen thawed. But this is one of the easiest snakes on the planet to assist feed. Nerd did a pretty great video on this not long ago. You can even feed babies with rodent tails from feeders for your other snakes if you have larger snakes. And this can be very handy as these guys are very tiny as babies. Basically, if you can get the tail into its mouth and just far enough into the throat that it can't spit it out right away, they'll just swallow it down. Just be gentle. Other than that, care is pretty typical for a snake of this size. This is a primarily terrestrial snake, so get an enclosure that favors floor space over vertical space. Make sure that the enclosure has a fantastic lid so good that an intelligent athletic shoelace could not find a way out. Provide heat on a thermostat using a heat mat, tape, cable, or something similar, and ensure that this heat is available at one end of the enclosure, but that the other side of the enclosure is considerably cooler so that they can regulate their body temperature as they see fit. I'm increasingly convinced that most reptiles will benefit from UVB, so provide that if you can as well. Substrate like aspen shavings will work great, Provide water at all times, as well as hides on the warm and cool side of the enclosure. And that's pretty much it. Be sure to spot clean whenever they make a mess and do full substrate changes when needed. It's pretty normal. You may need to get humidity up a bit, though they do best with not super high humidity. They do need higher humidity than most other African house snakes. Sort of like ball pythons, they can struggle with shedding if the humidity isn't high enough. The only real con to this particular species of house snakes is just that they might be more difficult to get feeding, especially on frozen thawed. Otherwise, it's just a normal snake. When it comes to hardiness, we give the black African house snake a score of four out of five. In the past, I would have given a lower score for hardiness as most black African house snakes were wild caught imports. And they still are, but there are many great breeders out there working with these guys now, and there's just no reason to get an import unless you're trying to diversify your bloodlines as a breeder. This video isn't for African house snake breeders. It's for you. So you should get a captive bred house snake. We have a whole video about this. And the reality is that as long as you get a baby that is eating well, it should keep eating well. And that's my only real concern with these guys. Assuming that you are careful with handling, that you prevent escapes and that you give them proper care, they should do really well. But don't get a wild caught snake. You will be so much happier with a captive bred baby. When it comes to availability, we give the black African house snake a score of three out of five. Including wild caught, I would go four out of five, but you don't want that. And, and watch out for that. If a seller isn't selling a black African house snake that is captive bred, that is because it isn't. Wild caught snakes are usually going to be larger, somewhere between $50 and $100, and the person selling it to you won't know much about them. You will see them at pet shops and expos. Just keep walking. Walk over to the table with a few different species of African house snakes to which nobody's paying any attention. And when you walk over and hear the passion in that person's voice for these rad snakes, that is how you will know that you've found the right place. If you're not at an expo, breeders like Reach Out Reptiles can easily be found online. And if you're concerned about having a snake shipped to you, order a snake from Reach Out Reptiles and see what an incredible job they do. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Black African House Snake a score of five out of five. Breeders are competing with $50 imports. Just pay what they're asking, it's not unreasonable. Because this isn't a huge snake, proper enclosures are affordable. A heating element, thermostat, and UV lamp and bulb will likely be some of your bigger expenses. And then substrate, bowls, and hides, 
those really won't cost much. There are cheaper pets like jumping spiders and cockroaches, but when it comes to reptiles, these are about as cheap as it's gonna get. Other than the cost of the snake itself, which is really not unreasonable, doesn't get much cheaper. And this is why overall, we give the black African house snake a score of 4.0 out of five. If what you want is essentially a tiny black retic that is more closely related to a cobra than to a python, then the black African house snake might just be the perfect pet snake for you. But I should mention that Garrett Hartle thinks that the brown house snake, which includes the black house snakes, are the lamest house snakes with which he works. So if you would like to see me go out to reach out reptiles so that we can cover the other species that he keeps, please consider supporting us on Patreon. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. Sometimes they're jet black, and sometimes they're nearly white, and most of the time they're 50 shades of gray, except without all the toxic relationships. <laughs> <laughs> but first I want to talk just a bit about... <laughs> and when you walk over and hear the passion in that person's voice for these rad snakes, and when you walk over and hear the passion in the... And when you walk over and hear the passion of the person's... Vo and when you walk over and hear the passion in that person's voice for these rad snakes, that is how you will know that you've found the right place. Nailed it. And B-roll. Rolling. You see me rolling. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've got some inspiration on a name. Yeah? What? Well, she's pearlescent and black. Oh. So, the black pearl. I was hoping you would say that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Now, I can't decide if that should be the name or if it should be Elizabeth Swan. Or Elizabeth oh, Turner. That's a good, that's a good question. Barbosa. <laughs> <laughs>